Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing my next video in my palette roulette series in which I review a palette that is in my collection that might also be in your collection. It's not necessarily about the brandest, newest thing on the market. It's just about getting some use out of my palettes. And I hope that sounds like that's something that you're interested in. Today we're going to be looking at the Michaela Pot 2 palette by Glamlight, and I'm so excited about it. And with that said, for those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty, and I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here, but ultimately I'm just out here talking about makeup because I like to talk about makeup. And if you also like to talk about makeup, I think that you have found the right place to be. And I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. With that said, let's just talk about some makeup, shall we? All right, all right. So today we are going to be talking about this palette here. This is the Glam Light Pot 2 palette with Michaela Nogueria. Nogueria. I don't follow Michaela. I don't know much about Michaela, to be honest. I just know what I know because of maybe some like critiques that she's had out there doing what she does. But I do know that she's pretty famous and that she's made a name for herself. Like she's definitely a household name. And I think that it's amazing every single time a creator gets to collab with a brand. So, and Glamlight is an awesome brand. It's a brand that I have plenty of palettes from. So I feel like I know their formulation a little bit more than anybody who just maybe purchased this palette because it's a Michaela palette. But as I said, this is pot two. I have a review on part one also on my channel and I will link it up in the cards for you. But I'm really excited to talk about this palette because it truly is a palette that is right up my alley in terms of the color story. This is the Michaela pot two palette. This is a $42 eyeshadow palette with 1.26 ounces of product in it, or 0.042 ounces per pan, because there are 30 eyeshadows in this palette. The palette is a cardboard backing with a nice magnetic closure on it, and this is like a piece of plastic that houses all of these like gold pieces, gold flecks that kind of move around in the palette so that it kind of gives you a little bit of animation that many palettes don't give. And then it just says Michaela and gold across the front and Glam Light 30 color palette. On the back, you see a little bit of information about the palette in that it has eyeshadows as well as pressed pigments. Pressed pigments are considered not eye safe most of the time. That is also why it is called a color palette and not an eyeshadow palette because they are per the FDA full of like chemical compositions and formulations that do not or are not safe for your eye. However, that is a USA thing. I know that in the UK it looks very different. So they do have to have this called a color palette because they have pressed pigments which are in the United States considered not eye safe. So it does have the eyeshadows listed up here, the pressed pigments listed up here. Down here it tells you that it is cruelty free and vegan and has an 18 month shelf life. Gives you a little bit of information about Glamlight and how to reach out to them if you'd want to. And it says, show off your looks using hashtag Michaela X Glamlight. This palette is not for sale anymore that I could tell on the Glamlight website. I was on there last night looking at counting which ones were press pigments and which ones were not. And it does show that it's not for sale anymore. This is what the inside of the palette looks like. It does have a mirror on it. And it is a relatively big mirror and a nice mirror. I just haven't taken the plastic backing off of it, but this is the color story. So you can see that this is 30 shades. There are 14 mattes and 16 shimmers in here. It was released in the summer of 2022, I do believe. And 18 of these eyeshadows are not safe 
for IU. So only 12 of the shadows in here would be considered eyeshadows versus pressed pigments. I did mark on the palette which ones were not I save, but I don't know if you can see that in the picture. It's basically these two bottom rows here, and then we have these two, these two, and these two. An awful lot of the beauty <laughs> is not suitable for eyes. If that bothers you, this is probably not the palette for you. If you already have it in your collection, you might consider using it as body paint. <laughs> Just saying. This is, like I said, 18 shades that are pressed pigment, 12 that are actual eyeshadows. As I said, this is the second palette collection collaboration for Michaela. Her first one was more of a like neutral tone, rainbow tone eyeshadow palette. I'll stick a picture of it in here. This one is definitely more jewel tone with that purple, blue, green, like golden, kind of thought process behind it. This collection also had a highlighter palette, a tan pan palette, some lip products, some blushes, and some lashes that went along with this collection. I only picked up this and I picked it up in a bundle with the first Michaela palette at the same time and got both palettes for approximately the same price as you would pick up one of these palettes. What I will say is that I feel like there is a huge differentiation in this palette's formulations versus the last palette's formulations in that the last palette, there was quite a bit of patchiness in the mattes, like when you would put them onto your eyeball and pat them in and then blend them out. It, there was a lot of patchiness. They couldn't be placed on top of each other because there'd be a lot of voiding, so you couldn't build them up, so to speak. Uh, there was also a ton of fallout. I didn't really feel the same way about this palette. I felt like it blended beautifully. There was no patchiness that was created and it definitely builds on top of itself. I do have multiple different shades in my eye look today built up to create what is my eye look today. And I didn't see any kind of patchiness, no voiding, none of that. And there was so little fallout with this palette. I was actually pretty shocked because with these kind of colors, you typically do get quite a bit of fallout. And with pressed pigments, you typically get quite a bit of fallout because they're just in the way that they lay in the pan. They're just built differently. I didn't feel that way about these shadows at all. I feel like they worked best with the primer. They blended out really great. I didn't notice any patchiness, as I said, as long as there was a primer in use underneath it. If you were blending them out on a dry eye, like a unprimed, regular, just dry eye, there was a slight bit of blendability issue, but nothing to write home about and definitely nothing that seemed to matter at the end of the day. But over a prime dye, these blend so, so beautifully. There's minimal fallout with the mattes. There was some with the shimmers, but not nearly as much as you found in the last one. These shimmers also are, you know, chunky flaky like the the regular Glam Light formula is, but these ones feel a little less creamy or emollient than the last palette's shimmers did and that might have something to do with it because they're not like drying out and then flaking off your eye at any given moment in time. I also know in the last palette I had a problem with the shimmer specifically flaking throughout the day and these ones definitely did not. And you typically find that with more thin shimmers but I didn't feel like these were thin. I also didn't feel like they were thick, so to speak, but they were like the perfect consistency for the shimmer that you want to place on your eye look. They didn't exacerbate any texture. They didn't like create texture where there wasn't any. I just think that they're a really, really beautiful shimmer, to be honest. Even the black based ones in here, which are all on my eyes today, I have both the purple and the black based green shimmer on my eye today. 
and I do feel like even they were pretty spectacular. And the shimmers are best with finger application. I did start the application on my eye look today with my finger, then blend it out along the edges to make it come together so it wasn't so scary looking at the end of the day, but they are definitely best with your finger. But they also do work well with a brush. I would say a wet brush specifically or over the top of a glitter glue of some sort is where you're going to see the most impact from them. The formula, like I said, feels a lot different than the first Michaela. In the first Michaela, the shimmers were a little bit more creamy, felt a little bit more like a super shock shadow does, and they maybe created a little bit of texture or were texturizing to your eye as well as created a lot of fallout throughout throughout not only application but also throughout the day and I didn't see that with these but also I feel like the mattes might have been an up leveled <laughs> formula as well. These are cruelty free vegan and there is an 18 month shelf life on this palette but I mean, I think like 18 months is whatever. It is semantics at this point. I have formulas in my collection that I've had for years and years and years that still work perfectly fine. So you do you, boo. The wear time on these shadows with the primers approximately 10-ish hours before significantly seeing any kind of like fading or movement on your eyes. And without a primer, I would say they lasted about seven-ish hours, which is still a really decent amount of time for an eye look, specifically an eye look of like this caliber or as creative as these eye looks get or um, even this color story. Uh, typically the darker colors don't last nearly as long on your eyes, dependent on what formula it is that you're working with. The packaging on this is everything. Like I said, it is just a cardboard packaging but with the plastic here and the the fun sprinkles inside of it it is a super fun palette lends a lot to like Michaela and her you know her funness I guess out in the YouTube space and the magnet closure on this guy is actually a pretty decent magnet closure so it's not a palette that you're going to see something like jar itself in there if you're taking it on a trip with you or whatnot as a matter of fact I took this with me to Alaska and it traveled in my travel bag it went under the plane it bounced around all over the place and it's in perfectly great condition so I would say it's also not a fragile palette while I don't feel like these are super firmly pressed in here I also know that it bounced around under that plane they're not careful with those suitcases as they're throwing them onto the baggage claims and it as long as you you know pack it nicely in your bag it's going to travel fine um I really liked this palette there were some surprising shades for me um with a palette of this size I don't typically live swatch but I will do some swatches for you so that you can see them and I will put them up here now while I get some swatches that I can live swatch of some of the colors in here that I was super impressed with so honestly, these first three here, I think that they are really gorgeous. And these ones act more, honestly, as toppers for the most part. I did use them an awful lot in my eye looks as like inner corner or brow bone highlight. They are just so, so, so pretty. And that is glazed, sparkly, and poppin' in that order with the two whites being incredibly different actually. And you can see it in the pan too when you're looking at the palette, you can see the difference of them in the pan. One is more of a like a white white with kind of like a little bit of a gold flip and the other one is a white with kind of a blue flip. Uh, really beautiful. I also really, really loved this purple here and this like blue purple here and then the, this like cobalt here so those are the next ones i am gonna swatch for you i mean talk about beautiful jewel tones so i have those three colors right there so the purple is called oh my god 
The light blue is called I Love You and the dark, dark blue is called You. I mean, this one here, oh, this one here went really well with both blue eye looks and purple eye looks. It swung either way and really gave a completely different dynamic to the eye look that you were putting them into. I just had so much fun with this eyeshadow palette and even the pastels in here. So these three, these three shades here, this one and these two were, I'm not a pastel girl, we all know this, but I actually had a lot of fun with these pastel shades as well. I have this one actually, the light blue, in the inner corner of my eye look and blended out around the green. And it's just really a beautiful, beautiful baby blue. I mean, yes, they're pastel but they're not like Easter egg or super white based pastels. So you're going to get a good amount of color payoff out of them without it fading into nothingness on your eye when you do get it into your eye look. It is very loud and proud in my eye look and this eye look has been on my face for quite some time. So I really, really loved this palette. You will see the swatches that I have prepared for you here now. There are just way too many swatches for me to walk through this palette with you. You guys know how I roll. I typically will do live swatches, but when the palettes are this big, I don't want to keep you guys here for 800 hours. So we don't do the swatches. I just swatch the ones that are, you know, that speak to me and that I had so much fun with. Um, the one thing that I would say that this palette lacks is a lot of those just everyday regular tones like browns and creams and maybe even, um, maybe even just a crease shade. And that's okay by me because I am a purple in the crease kind of person or a blue in the crease or a green in the crease or whatever kind of person. And they do give you some lighter shades to do that with. You guys just saw me swatch them. But for a lot of people, this cannot be a one and done eyeshadow palette because it doesn't have those shades. I really do like a matte inner corner and brow bone, a matte white inner corner and brow bone. And that isn't in this palette. It doesn't exist. So I did use this palette an awful lot for that inner corner brow bone, like creamy shade. And that's fine. Most of us who do have this palette have more than just one eyeshadow palette, right? But if this was you and you're only buying it because of the Michaela thing, like this could be a problem for you because number one, it's full of color. And number two, it's also full of eyeshadows that aren't eyeshadows. Maybe they cause irritation with your eyes. Also, it doesn't have some of those more normal eyeshadows that make a colorful eye look with these colors in it more daytime appropriate for those of you that have to go to work with a different kind of eye look on your face. Um, with that said, I did not notice any kind of like super staining out of these, but like when using the pinks or the purples specifically, the darker purples, I did notice a little bit of pinking that appeared after I took my makeup off my face, but within, you know, by the next morning and that cleanse, that, that, potential staining of my eyelid was gone. I didn't have any kind of irritation with these eyeshadows and I do have them pretty locked in on my waterline, my under eye. They did occasionally get into my eye. Not that I love doing that, but I didn't have any irritation with this. So like in terms of will a pressed pigment, you know, really bother you? Are they really eye safe or no? I have never really had a problem with using pressed pigments in my eye area, but you very well might. So uh, it's not for me to say, that is absolutely up to you. With that said, I would probably put this palette, I think the last Michaela palette I put into that yellow zone. And for those of you unfamiliar, I rank all the palettes that I've used at the end of the year. And I have like green, yellow, and red 
pretty self-explanatory green meaning they're the best of the best yellow meaning they're kind of middle of the road they could either fall really low or really high on the scale for me and then red meaning they need to go or I have decluttered them which is the case for a lot of them most of the time this one I think I have rated in the green whereas the last one I think I put into the yellow so I am gonna go pick out a new palette or two and I will be right back Okay, so I am actually picking two palettes today and they're both pretty big palettes, but there's not a lot of shades. I think it's roughly the same amount of shades that I was just dealing with, even maybe less, but these are the two palettes that I picked and I think that they're going to pair very, very well together. Let's start with this one. I did pick up the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Moonlit Seduction Palette. And I am truly, truly inspired by this color story. I do think that it is a palette that I had been looking at for so long of a time frame before picking it up. This is the Mothership 10. And I don't know where we're at right now. I do think that this is one of her newer ones. But this is the color story of this guy. And, you know, I've always said that I don't think that Pat McGrath is all that it's cracked up to be like the formulation of her palettes is just kind of meh for me I am not a huge fan of her mattes I do love her special shades but these palettes are super expensive and you only get four of those special shades in it but this color story is something special it is super beautiful like this this shade right here to you guys looks kind of gray. And for me, from this angle, it's a very pinky purple color. I just think it is so, so pretty. So I cannot wait to use this. And to go along with this, I did pick up the Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge when it first came out. And I think that this is actually going to be a pretty perfect palette to partner with Moonlit Seduction. I don't think that Moonlit Seduction has enough shades for me, which is why I'm partnering it with these, but you can tell that this is new because it still has the, um, the crazy plastic on it. And I kind of want to take it off, but at the same time, I don't want to take it off because I don't want, oh, well, okay, I guess we're taking it off. Look it. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, that in and of itself is gorgeous, but the palette looks like this. Oh, it's so pretty. I do think that I, I, I love Huda Beauty's formula, but I have to be in a special kind of mood to pick up her palettes. I like her Obsessions palettes. I have an affinity for them in way back when. They were all I could afford from her. And with the new palette, the, with her holiday palettes, the big palette, the one big palette that she does every single year. I've, I think I have five now. I think this makes five. I have six. This one makes six. I have, I don't pick up every single one of them, much like Pat McGrath. I pick and choose which ones really speak to my soul. This one really spoke to my soul this year. I don't know why. I think I'm just on like kind of a cool tone kick. And like I said, I do think that these two palettes are going to partner pretty perfectly together because what doesn't exist in the Huda palette with pinks, I'm definitely going to find in the Pat McGrath palette. And there are 18 shadows in here and 10 in here. So we're looking at 28 eyeshadows, which is still less than the one palette that we just visited last week. So these are the two palettes that I will come to you next. When I review, I typically give myself a good amount of time to review a palette. I used to do these every single week, but then I felt like I was pumping and not able to like really spend enough time with these palettes. So when I introduced you guys to the Michaela palette, I think it was about three weeks ago at the time that I'm filming this. And um, maybe four weeks ago at the time that I'm filming this, I give my a really good amount of time to use every single shade more than once and get a good feel for them so that I could give you the good, the bad, the ugly on the palette. Now both the Pretty Grunge and the Moonlit Seduction are not necessarily antique palettes in the beauty space, but like this one was. So 
Again, this isn't about the newest thing out there. I just want to make sure I'm getting some use out of my products and let you guys know how I feel about them as well. You guys should have seen all of the swatches for the Michaela palette and all of the eye looks I was able to create. I had a lot of fun with that palette and if it were still available, I would definitely suggest it be a palette that belong in your collection. But also, there's tons of other palettes on the beauty space, maybe even cheaper ones that you can get with a very, very similar color story. I love Glam Lights formula. It's so good. You almost can't go wrong most of the time with their color story. The lowest ranking, like in terms of the red, yellow, and green that I've ever had for them is somewhere in the yellow, and it's usually middle of the road, but I've had an awful lot of like really gold star palettes from them, and that one would be a gold star palette for me. I'm really excited to see how we feel about these two palettes at the end of the day. It's quite a different culture shock than what we were dealing with with the Michaela palette. So um, my looks maybe are going to be maybe a little less like creative, but that's okay. I'm here for it and I hope that I see you in the next video. Do you know anything? Have you tried the Michaela palette? What are your thoughts? I would also like to know if you have these palettes and if you do, what are your thoughts on these palettes? Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you and yours are well. I hope that you are all healthy and safe and getting along as best that you can out there. I hope that you are all loving each other but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.